There are only four audio effects that you really need to learn as a video editor. The de channel EQ, the compressor, and the limiter. Good audio makes up half of a good video. Anyone will listen to a great sounding podcast with no visuals, but nearly no one will watch great visuals with bad sound. So learning how to use these will help you better communicate your story. I personally wish that I learned how to use these tools sooner. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And I wanna give a thank you to Gabriel for helping me refine this lesson. That is part of my Final Cut Pro course. And if you wanna master Final Cut Pro in under 30 days, make sure you check it out. We all know that raw sound can be sometimes, well, messy, but with the right tools, you can shape it into something awesome. Just like how an artist uses brushes and colors to paint a picture, we'll use these audio tools to paint our sound. I'm not an audio engineer and I have mad respect for what they do. And sometimes what they do seems like magic to me. But I do know when something doesn't sound right and you have to go and try to fix it when you can. Using the de which is the go-to for smoothing out those sharp S's in voices, the channel EQ, which you can think of like a fancy treble and bass control. If you want more punch or brightness in your sound, that tool's got your back. And the compressor, which is like a sound balancer, making sure that the loud parts aren't too loud and the quiet parts are clear enough to be heard. And finally, the limiter, which is kind of like the compressor, but it's more like a security guard for sound. It makes sure that the volume doesn't go too crazy and it stays just right. And these plugins function virtually the same across all video applications. But before we're tweaking any of these plugins, it's always best practice to first denoise your audio because any adjustment with these plugins may amplify the noise. And we don't want that. Most applications have a great audio denoise and Final Cut has a great AI voice isolation effect that works great for dialogue. And to find it, you select your audio, go to the audio tab in the inspector, find a voice isolation. If you don't see it, just move this tab down or make sure that you are on an active audio channel. Listen back to your audio and set it to just where you can't hear any of the background noise anymore. If you set the strength too high, the voice can sound very processed. There are other plugins like Clear that do essentially the same thing, but give you a little bit more control. After the audio has been denoised, we're going to start with the de plugin, which can be found in the effects browser under voice or just search for it by clicking all and de -esser. Just make sure to hit the X on the search bar to clear it. Otherwise you'll be wondering why all your other effects are missing. If you've ever noticed that how sometimes when people say words with the letter S, it sounds too sharp and hissy, that's called the sibilance. And it can be pretty annoying, especially if you're listening to a long podcast or a long form video. And the de plugin is like a sound detective that finds those hard S's and calms them down. It's especially handy when working with dialogue or voiceovers to make sure that everything sounds smooth. And the de in combination with the channel EQ, help balance the sound of different parts of your audio. The de tackles those sharp S sounds and the channel EQ smooths out the rest. So together they help to make sure that the sound is top notch and pleasant to listen to. They typically start with, if it's male or female, with the male vocal split band and it sets the parameters and then I can go back and just, then I can just listen. There are three more auto poles spanning across the room. One is holding up a key. So then I'll just lower the threshold to the audio. So this is before I've done any audio adjustments before raising the volume. I just wanna find that frequency that is at that higher end where those sibilances will come down. I tend to leave it on the default for the max reduction at six dB, but you don't really need to do that. You can just go down a little bit. So it's like three or four dB. Don't have to get too crazy with it. You wanna find that sibilance frequency if it's there. So you can just press the filter solo and you can see where the reductions happen. And you just want it to be subtle. If it's not there, then you wanna keep it kind of loose, but if you do hear it, it's really gonna pop through. Cause you just wanna bring it down so it's comfortable to listen. Like you still want them to be there. You don't want it but to But let's remember ChatGPT2 compared to three and now four, or even the first iteration of Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to where they all sit now. Apple moves slower, but when they do, they do it by leaps. So it's not that it's falling behind, it's just, they have and you can click on filter solo. You're trying to find that bounce where, but Apple is patient. And they're advantaged by having where those 
are are punching through higher than everything else when you're when you have filtering it and you can start seeing those peaks get bigger when you change so the frequency when you start going lower it'll start to affect more and more sounds but you want to find that nice balance that works for the voice that you're working with and once you found it and you play it back Let's remember ChatGPT2 compared to 3 and now 4, or even the first iteration of Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to where they all sit now. Apple moves slower, but when they do... So ultimately, it just brings down those S's, those sounds, the, the sibilance of those higher S's. So if someone, if you find that someone talks with a lot of those kind of sibilance, then you can just use the de -er to find that balance where it brings it down. You can still hear the, that they're still using those sounds, but it lowers them down into a comfortable listening area. The channel EQ, which stands for equalizer, lets you adjust or equalize these frequencies. If you think that there's too much bass, you can turn it down. If you want more brightness, then you can turn up the higher frequencies. It's like a sound equalizer on your dad's stereo, but way more detail. This tool is great for making music and any audio sound just right. And allows you to carve out frequencies that aren't pleasant to listen to or enhance ones that you want to highlight. The DSR tackles those sharp S frequencies while the channel EQ smooths out the rest. But together, they make sure that your sound is top notch and pleasant to listen to. The channel EQ, you can just go under all, make sure your audio is selected, double click it, it comes up. So you just wanna click on the analyzer this will show you the frequencies. So you can see my voice is going from about 100 hertz all the way up to about 6,000. So that's my voice range. So there's not much happening down here, so I typically just turn that on. So we're cutting out all this because there's usually nothing there or it's not gonna affect anything. I'm gonna turn on the high end, cut down the bounce in the room and noise spilling in from outside of the room. This works really great when recording and for client calls. You can hear- Commend the door sound blanket. You can hear how it starts to become muffled. If you push lower frequencies too far- But I mount right onto the teleprompter to give- It'll start to give that radio voice. So you just wanna find it where it carves out the frequencies that you're not affecting. That's what the shelves are for. And for my voice, I typically like to add in a little bit of the lower end and adding a little bit of the brighter end as well. Now you can do this before or after. I typically like doing it after, after I find the nice balance for my voice. And it, the whole key is not to go overboard. If it already sounds good, don't push it too much. But the other thing I like to do, when I have it a good, good place, I typically like to add a second channel EQ and then I look for frequencies that aren't pleasant. And what I mean by that is, what I listen for is just harsh frequencies that don't sound pleasant. Uh, and the lower end, they're gonna be like woo, 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 and other frequencies that sound singing. And this is something that you just have to do over and over again to find it for each voice. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's that woo, woo, woo sound. So I wanna take that and blanket from vocal booth to go. I actually have two sound blankets in the room. The other one is mounted to the door to both cut down the bounce and, and just reduce it by three to six dB. So then I'll go look for another one. So I highly recommend the door sound blanket. The main light I'm using is the Amaran 150C. This light is actually more powerful than I expected it to be for the price point. And it's super quiet and it has an Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 with a grid on to reduce the spill and to focus the light on the five by seven foldable bounce against the wall. This creates really soft lighting. So if you can hear that singing, it's the same thing that we got in the lower frequencies, but we're getting it now in the mid tones. And you just cut it down by three to six dB. You don't wanna go too harsh with any of this. And that's the mistake that I made early on is pushing it a bit too hard, where just like with color grades, you wanna make sure that it's the audio tweaking is subtle. So I'll just continue. The next auto pole is holding up the backlight with a six inch vice grip. Also, there's another six inch vice grip to mount another light when I'm shooting B-roll. And I'll show you that a little bit later. The last auto pole is holding up an eight by eight sound blanket from vocal booth to go. I actually have two sound blankets in the room. The other one is mounted to the door to both cut down the bounce in the room 
and noise spilling in from outside of the room. This works really great when recording and for client calls. So I highly recommend the doors. And if you don't find something, then don't go looking for it because Another mistake that I made early on is pushing the peaks too high to find that. It's that like, well, if you push anything that hard, yeah, you're gonna find some frequencies that don't sound good. So you wanna look subtly, and if it pops out, it'll pop out. And even if you do find something in that range, you only wanna bring it down a couple of dB to really try to just minimize it and let the other frequencies fill in around it really nicely so you have a pleasant sound because you don't want to get rid of the frequencies because then you can create holes and you can actually make it sound worse. And once you have it sounding nice overall, this is where the limiter and the audio compressor come in. Because when working with sound, it's important to control how loud or quiet parts can be. And this is called the dynamic range of the audio. Think of the compressor like a volume manager for the sound. It makes sure that the sound doesn't get too loud or stay too quiet. It does this by using settings like threshold, ratio, attack, and release. If a sound gets too loud, the compressor can turn it down a bit. This helps keep the sound even and clear. It's a tool that once you understand it, becomes very powerful in your whole tool set. Any sound louder than the threshold gets the compressor's attention. And when working with raw sounds like uh, voice recording or dialogue from a camera, you can set this at about minus 20 as a good guideline. The ratio tells the compressor how much we want to turn down the loud sound. If the ratio is two to one, then every two decibels over that threshold, the sound is turned down by one decibel over. The higher the ratio, the more the sound gets turned down. I typically like to keep my ratio between two and three, and sometimes a little bit higher, but that really depends on what was recorded and what the final sound I'm looking for. The attack, it's all about timing. Once a sound goes over the threshold, how quickly should the compressor start working? A fast attack means that the compressor starts almost instantly, while a slower attack lets the loud bit play a little bit before turning it down. Typically, I like to set the attack really fast, because I want the sound to be brought down. And finally, the release is really about what happens after the loud sound is done. How long should the compressor keep working before it stops? A fast release means that it stops quickly, while a slow release keeps the volume down a little bit longer. I like to set the release a little bit longer because with dialogue, you know that the next word is coming soon and not to be bouncing too quickly between turning on and turning off. So again, think of a compressor like a sound bouncer at a club. The threshold is the volume limit. The ratio is how strict the bouncer is. The attack is how quickly the bouncer reacts. And the release is how long the bouncer stays alert. And with the right settings, your sound will be in perfect harmony. When I do use a compressor, I typically set the level at which the, the signal will be affected. So I typically like to leave this at about minus 20 because anything below minus 20 I don't want it to be affected. The ratio is so I, I like to have it around somewhere between three and four so for every three decibels it goes over the threshold I want to bring it down to one decibel over the threshold. The makeup is there to bring up the volume again because if this is set too aggressive then this will bring that volume back up. And then you want to adjust the, the attack so it happens fairly quickly. And then the release, but I like to set it to about 500 milliseconds. You can leave it at 1,000 milliseconds, but I like to set it to about 500 milliseconds. So the effect gets released a little bit quicker. And I definitely want a soft knee. So in this case, I'm going to bring down, because you can see it here, that I want to keep it at around 6 dB as the, the highest level. So this is trying to bring up those lower portions. Apple has been quietly stirring the pot in the world of AI in the most Apple way possible. And their master plan revolves around something that they call the neural engine, a mysterious piece of tech that lives in every single device that they sell today. But what is the neural engine and how could it possibly give Apple the upper hand in the long-term AI race? Well, buckle up 
because in this video, we're going on a journey into the heart of Apple's secret AI strategy, from their dedicated AI chips, their neural engine, their stealthy AI acquisitions, and more. So again, the, the limiter and the compressor try to achieve very similar things. They try to limit a signal from going past a certain point, and the compressor just tries to bring the dynamics of the whole audio signal a little bit closer together. You still may need to use both of them in conjunction, like you see here, there, it does want to peak. So you can turn on a limiter that is built into the compressor and tell it to limit at minus three. And that should drop that down. So there is a limiter that is built into compressor. So you could use this as a one-stop shop for the entire, for the effect. And it's about finding that balance where it still sounds good. And you wanna make sure that if you do need to raise the output, like if you push a little bit too hard and now in Final Cut Pro, or, or the, the original signal isn't that loud, on the Mac, or even can, theory in its now seemingly limited capacity, then you have used Apple's AI on device. All these AI tools, all these AI, so you can use the output to raise the gain of the entire signal and even crunch that down a bit more. So the compressor is not the simplest tool to use, but it is powerful for what it does do. And just like the compressor, the limiter is like a stricter version of the compressor. It sets a max volume level and makes sure no sound goes above it. If any sound tries to go over this max level, the limiter quickly turns it down. And this is super useful when you want to make sure that the sound doesn't get too loud and cause distortion or hurt the ears of the listener. And in the video world, it's often used to make sure that you stay within the guidelines to make sure that there is no peaking or distortion within any audio. So it's great when you're delivering to YouTube, to other formats, to other distributions, to make sure that the audio stays within its range. And we have how much gain we want to raise. So we want to raise the lower portions, but at the same time we want to lower and almost like it's hitting a brick wall, hence why it's called brick wall, those higher places. So right now, if I play this back for CPUs, it is what powers features like. So it's bouncing around between minus 12 and minus six, but then there's moments where it pops up. So I do want to raise the overall volume. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna bring it up a few, decibels. So I'm going to go to three because I wanted to get between six and three is where I want to go. The release is how long it takes to relax before it, it comes out. The output level, I'm going to drop to minus three because that's kind of, that's where I wanted to limit it to. I'm going to change it to legacy and then soft knee. That just gives it a, instead of a, a hard change, it's going to kind of bend it out and give it a, a soft knee. So if we look back to this section here where there was that pop, so I'm gonna turn it off and you're gonna see this section pop up and these sections come down. So if we look again, those sections start to come down and I can boost this up even more and it's starting to bring up that overall the level so if you look how, how much higher these are, and but if we play it back, we should start seeing the reduction part playing as well. Learning in AI applications. This means it can perform these tasks more quickly and efficiently than general purpose CPUs. It is what powers features like Face ID, Siri, and on-device processing for... So this is really useful if, if there's too much dynamics in the voice where there's too quiet and then it gets really loud and then too... And you wanna kind of balance it out where that energy still remains because you don't wanna blast this all the way up where, and then it just becomes one level for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your iPhone and now in fun, you still wanna have a little a bit of dynamics, but if you notice that it's being cut out at minus three, so it's not going above that level, but the waveform has just become this wall of sound. Everything with effects and with sound effects, with visual effects, with anything, it's subtlety is the key. So I'm just gonna drop this 
back down to about six. So I'm giving it a gain of six decibels. The dynamics of the voice does come back and on device processing for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your iPhone and now in Final And Pro, now you can see or the predictive text in any messaging app on the Mac or even Siri in its now seemingly limited capacity, then you have used Apple's AI on device. All these AI tools currently feel so you want to find it where it's just the reduction is just bouncing a little bit. So it can probably crank this up a little bit more, but this raises the lower parts of the speech but also make sure that none of none of the higher and stronger portions get too high and start to peak. That's the whole thing that we're trying to do here. What powers features like Face ID, Siri, and on-device processing for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your own. So Limiter is actually a very simple tool, but it's a very powerful tool. It limits how high something can go but you can raise everything up to get to a certain point. So it's about finding that nice balance of what the limiter can do. Now, I know that the limiter and the compressor, they sound like they do the same thing, and both the compressor and limiters deal with controlling how loud sounds can be. But the main difference is how they actually do the work. Compressors adjust the volume gently, making sure it's balanced and sounds good. Limiters are more strict and they make sure the sound doesn't go past a certain point. While limiters shape the sound to make it more pleasing, limiters are more about safety and protection. So to sum it up, having the channel EQ, the de compressors and limiters as your main four tool set when working with audio, it's the best way to make sure that your dialogue, your music, your sound effects, all have their own frequencies that they play in. They don't go over certain thresholds or limits and everything just sounds pleasant to everyone listening to it. So knowing how to use them is key for making sure that your sound is its best. If you wanna get the most out of Final Cut Pro and want to learn it in under 30 days, check out Enhanced Editing and Expert's Guide to Final Cut Pro with over 10 hours of lessons focused on everything Final Cut Pro has to offer to help you master your craft and elevate your story. The link is in the description. As always, thanks for watching.